Okay guys, so as usual, we have the summary for the new chapter of My Hero Academia, chapter 358, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so the chapter title is going to be The Man Who Improved Just a Little. The chapter begins with Shigaraki surfing on the millions of fingers and hands that are coming out of him. He asks if the heroes will just keep running away, and we see Sun Eater getting hit hard by one of the hands. Holy shit, I hope he ends up being okay. Nedray shots his name, but then immediately releases a wave to block the attack coming her way. Best Genius is also surfing on one of his wires and says that everyone needs to keep moving because if they stop for even one second, they will be swallowed. They need to find Shigaraki's body as fast as possible. Okay, so things have really evolved since the last time we checked in on this fight. I mean, I, I, I know we saw like a bunch of his hands being out there, but it seems like he's doing like his own sad man parade with his fingers and hands after. And we see possibly Sun Eater getting, I don't think Sun Eater's dead, I doubt it, but we see him get hit pretty hard apparently in the chapter and he might be down for the count. Which kind of sucks because Sun Eater's a character that I really enjoy. I like his power set and I really wish we got to see more of him, but it looks like he's getting knocked out of this fight pretty early on, which I guess it makes sense because this is actually going to be Bakugo's big fight for the arc. Edshot, I actually forgot Edshot was even part of this team. Edshot uses one of his nimpos to bypass a huge mass of fingers and destroy it. He says that he still doesn't believe that this is all just a function of Shigaraki's body without the influence of any quirk. That's right, we still don't know exactly how Shigaraki is actually doing this because his quirks are currently being cut off by Eraser Head. So because of the fact that that's happening, we know he's not actually using the quirk, so this is kind of like just his body mutating, I guess? Which is weird, but also kind of cool. Kind of reminds me a lot, and I'm sure people have made a comparison already, but it kind of reminds me of the main villain of Akira. Which I honestly forget that villain's name because I only saw the movie once, but it reminds me a lot of what happened with him, and I wonder what's going to end up coming of this. Like, during his fight with Bakugo is all said and done, and he gets his mind completely taken over by All for One's consciousness, is it going to be like he's having some kind of like ultimate transformation at the end of that, where we get to see like the perfected All for One Shigaraki combination? This is when Tomura slash All for One begins a monologue. The pronouns used is Boku, which implies that All for One is in control. That's right, because uh, All for One's the one that actually uses Boku, and I forget what. Uh, I forget what Tomura uses or what Shigaraki uses, but the, I know it's not Boku. Uh, he says that as the All for One quirk stabilizes in Tomura's body, the other multiple quirks contained with, within it also begin to adapt to this new environment, causing the body to take on a more subtle form, or no, more suitable form. And this body and this power then become things over which All for One has complete control. He then says that having control over something is ideal. That the rest of the world is falling apart because the elements that make it up are losing its established shape and becoming more confusing as times go on. The differences that are too big lead to a lack of understanding, and this lack of understanding results in fear and rejection. Therefore, the solution is to let all for one dominate everything. In the world he will create, all people will be exploited, though in a way it's the closest thing to the peaceful world the heroes want. Okay, so I think we already knew this, that this was all for one's plan, that basically, you know, obviously he wanted to start with Japan, but eventually he was planning on going to all the other countries around the world, and basically just dominating everyone, and ruling with an iron fist, kind of like creating world peace in the same way that uh, Lelouch over in Code Geass wanted to, but on a more like, I'm actually in control kind of level, instead of, you know, Lelouch where he was basically just doing it to kind of make himself the enemy of the world. The two of them basically have like the same method of achieving their goal, but they have different results that they're trying to get to. So we're back on the topic of what his ultimate plan is, basically world domination. It really makes me realize exactly how afraid he was of Star and Strike, because with her ability, New Order, he would have been able to take him out pretty quickly. In fact, going back to that fight, the only reason why she lost it in the first place was because Shigaraki slash All for One isn't really Shigaraki or All for One. Bakugo is furious that he doesn't know if it's All for One or Shigaraki speaking. But that regardless of who it is, he can't stand to hear those two talk since Kamino. All this time running was enough to prepare the equipment that the support course made for him. Heavy mobile compact artillery strafing panzer. As the name suggests, several guns come out of Bakugo's back and he starts shooting wildly, saying that he and the other heroes will obliterate his body. When Bakugo starts thinking about everyone who's giving it their all at this point, Monoma and Aizawa are using Erasure to steal Shigaraki's quirk. Kaminari and the others are keeping the arena running, and Momo and Ko are making sure the Arena 4 is always there. Okay, this is actually kind of cool because this is showing some real, genuine growth for Bakugo, because up until this point, we really only see him be concerned with, like, 
maybe Deku and Todoroki, but uh, when it comes to everyone else in the class 1A, he's never really shown that much interest or concern about them and their well-being and how much they contribute to like his efforts. So the fact that he's actually thinking about them and actually kind of showing his gratitude for their effort and their support, this is actually kind of real growth for the character. I mean, it, it took like pretty much the entire series to get here, but this is definitely a lot of growth that he's actually showing off right here. Dan remembers the words of All For One, lack of understanding results in fear and rejection. As he thinks back to the time Midoriya saved him from the sludge villain all the way back in the beginning of the series, damn, chapter one. He says that he accepted differences, his own ignorance and his fear long ago. All of this was necessary for him to take the next step which was only possible because he knows a bunch of guys that are always moving forward. No matter how difficult or how long it takes, he calls Tomura slash Offer One a nut sack of fingers and says that all this talk is unnecessary. Best Genius is very impressed and calls him by his hero name, which I think is actually the first time I think we got to see Best Genius call him that. I might be wrong about that, but I think it actually is the first time. The chapter closes with Bakugo getting close to Shigaraki and starting to use his newest move, Howitzer Impact Cluster. Okay, so this ending of the chapter has me concerned a little bit, only because I haven't seen any images linking to this ending part to the summary matches, because of the fact that since we're not actually seeing him land a hit or actually use it against Igaraki slash Offer One in the chapter, you know, presumably, I, again, I haven't seen the image, but assuming that we see him activating it and not actually using it against Igaraki in this chapter, leads me to think that by him getting this close, Igaraki slash Offer One is going to be able to counterattack before he can get it off. Now, personally, I want to see him actually use it, but I have a feeling that he's going to get hit hard before he can actually use it. And then at the ending of his fight against Shigaraki, that's when he's finally going to use that attack. But anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I'm a little disappointed that this chapter is going over to the fight between Bakugo and Shigaraki. I mean, I was kind of looking forward to that fight too, but we left off on such an interesting cliffhanger with the Endeavor fight against All for One, with him regenerating at the end of it after taking the Providence Burn to the face. So I really was hoping we could continue that fight, but. I guess we'll come back to it at some point or figure out exactly what actually happened with that in some future chapter. But anyway, that's it for the video, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.